What's up, everybody? Our space here. Today, we've got a few stories, all asking the question, am I the asshole? I know you're excited to hear them, so let's get right into it. Am I the asshole for kicking my wife and her daughter out of my house? Me, 32 male, and my wife, Andy, 34 female, have been together for about three years now. We're married for one of those years. We get along really well. Only problem is her daughter, Carrie, 16 year old female. She is a daughter from my wife's previous marriage. Her father, my wife's ex-husband, died in a car accident about five years ago. When me and Andy started dating, we took things really slow. She didn't introduce me to Carrie until she knew things were serious between us. When I met Carrie, she was acting really distant and overall, she was mean to me. But I understood that, of course. I tried to bond with her and spend some time together, but I never forced her to do anything she didn't want to do. I told her to address me with my first name and had no intention to replace her father. I just wanted us to get along. Things got better, but sometimes she was rude to me and had some inappropriate comments. I never said anything to her because my wife told me to just give her some time. Things really escalated after our marriage. I offered my wife and her daughter to live in my house. Andy immediately agreed. Her daughter, not so much. But since she was 15 at the time, my wife gave her no choice. That's when the problem started. Carrie would intentionally make messes in the kitchen, like destroying glasses and plates, and leave the sharp glass on the ground. She would throw things out of the window and insult our neighbors, etc. This would happen like twice a week. I admit I have a bad temper, so sometimes I yelled at her and made her clean the mess, but I never laid my hands on her and never physically punished her. My wife repeatedly told her to stop behaving like that, but it didn't help. This went on for about a year. Last week, she had outdone herself. Me and Andy were coming home from dinner, and the garage door was open. We found Carrie there, and she was destroying my car. I have a BMW X5, so pretty expensive one. She slashed two tires with a knife and scratched the surface with her keys. I completely snapped. I told her she's an evil little B and get the F out of my house. My wife sided with her and said that Carrie is just acting out and I shouldn't call her like that. I was furious and told my wife that if she's okay with Carrie destroying my stuff, she can get the F out as well. We argued for about 15 minutes. During the argument, I said that I want Carrie to pay for my car and if she won't, I will sue her. I have a camera in my garage and have everything recorded. Andy told me I can't do that and that I'm heartless. In response to that, I told them both to pack their bags and get out. It was almost 12 p.m. They packed and left. When I think about it now, I know I could handle the situation better and more calmly, but I think this kind of had to happen. We will be having a divorce and I will be seeing a lawyer to sue Carrie for destroying my car. I was just so fed up with her constantly destroying stuff and overall being toxic. I talked about this with my parents and my mom kind of thinks I am the asshole. Update. It has been a couple of weeks since the incident now. I met with my wife and we discussed everything. She wanted to continue with our marriage and give it a second chance, but I told her I wanted a divorce. It was very hard for me, but in the end, I think it was the right thing to do. I still love my wife, but I don't want to be caught in the middle of all that again. Last year was the most stressful and hardest period of my life, and I felt like I have to put my mental health and my well-being first. This wasn't easy for Andy either, but I think she understood. We agreed this would be also better for Carrie. I strongly advise to get her daughter professional help, and Carrie has started therapy last week. We went to lawyer's office and signed the divorce papers. It was really quick and smooth. We had a prenup, didn't share money, and our marriage lasted only a year. There are still some small things that need to be dealt with, but it is pretty much over. I also met with my lawyer. We got a rough estimate on that car damage, and it's a lot. Two slashed tires, deep scratches all over the car, and a bit cracked windows. It's all about 6,000 euros. Average salary in my country is 1,000 euros a month, so this is a lot of money. We talked to my insurance company, and my insurance doesn't cover vandalism or any kind of this damage. My lawyer strongly advised me to go to the police and press charges against Kerry. I wasn't sure about this, but he said if anything goes wrong, this will help my case. So I did that. A couple days after, I met with Andy to talk about the situation. We both brought our lawyers to help us with all the legal stuff. I told her my insurance won't cover anything, and I want her to pay for all the damage. She said she doesn't have that much money. They moved in with her parents and she is looking for a new place, so she needs all the money she can get right now. I offered to pay for the damage now, as she will be paying me back when she has the money. She agreed. Because I reported Carrie to the police, she will have a criminal record, which sucks, because it will likely cause her problems in the future, but she kind of brought her on herself. And in a couple of weeks, she will be facing something like a civil rights court. 
My lawyer says she will most likely end up getting a court-ordered psychiatrist and some hours of community work. It has been a really rough couple of weeks, but my amazing friends helped me a lot to get through this all, and I'm glad it's over. Also, thank you guys for your judgments and kind messages. Good for you for standing your ground, OP. And don't feel bad for reporting Carrie to the police. You did her a favor. If she doesn't get punished when she is young for doing bad things, she will continue to do these things when she is older and only get herself in more trouble. Additionally, being sad, shocked, doesn't mean that she can do anything she wants. She can let out her anger or grief by talking. Stretching up someone's car and causing 6,000 euros in damage simply is not acceptable. If you thought that one was good, wait till you hear this one. In which the poster asks, Am I the asshole for telling my fiancé we should call the wedding off if she doesn't approve of my female best man? So, I, 20 a male, proposed my girlfriend, Jasmine, 24 female, and March. Earlier this week, she and I were talking about wedding plans, and she already picked out who her bridesmaids were going to be, and was questioning me about my groomsmen to see who'd walk with who and all that. I told her that I wanted to let her know that my best man was actually going to be my best friend, Kate, 27 female. Jasmine kind of freaked out and was really adamant about her not being the best man. I asked her why, and she listed off a lot of reasons, none of which I believe. She said it'll look weird in the photos. That'll be weird when Kate has to walk down the aisle with her maid of honor. That she doesn't want Kate to be distracting to guests. That Kate's too short, what the fuck, to stand next to a bunch of six-foot guys. The reasons were ridiculous, and I told her as much. She told me I should respect her wishes for the wedding and gave me suggestions for other best men. I know the real reason might be jealousy, but I want to just drop it and go along with her insecurities. We ended up getting into a big argument. Chaz was upset that I wasn't budging on my stance and I was mad she was acting so irrational. She was being really accusatory about why I wanted Kate in the wedding so bad. I finally told her if she doesn't want to let me have this one thing, maybe there shouldn't be a wedding at all. She got really angry and told me to just leave our apartment. I've been couch surfing at a friend's for the past couple days, not Kate. Last time I tried to talk to Jazz, she asked if I was ready to apologize and I said no because I don't want her to think she was right about forbidding me from letting Kate be in the wedding. And before anyone asks, no, Kate and I have never been sexual or romantic. She's been one of my closest friends and introduced me to my current social circle. I used to be an awkward, nerdy guy who had trouble making friends. Now I'm an awkward, nerdy guy with a social life. We survived grad school together and she's been with me through high and low parts of my life and it seems insane to not include her in my wedding. Jazz and Kate know each other, but aren't friends. And over time, Jazz got used to me having a close female friend without being jealous, mistrusting. Or so I thought. Am I the asshole? Edit. I should mention, Jasmine has never acted this way before and is usually pretty easygoing and understanding. She didn't so as much as kick me out as she said, well maybe you should just go then. And I called her bluff and left. She tried to get me to come back and also apologize. But we're both hard-headed when it comes to what we want. I don't want to call off the wedding, and I get why Jazz was upset by me saying we should, but I wanted her to know how serious I was. Update. My fiance and I ended up making up and reconciling a few days later. We were talking compromises, and it was still a touchy subject that out that I was going good and we'd recover. I wish I could leave it at that. She's now my ex fiance A little over two weeks after our fight, a friend of Jazz contacted me. She told me Jasmine had been venting to her friends over the Kate situation, and she couldn't keep quiet any longer because it wasn't fair to me. This friend sent me messages between Jasmine and them, where Jasmine is essentially talking about not trusting me and Kate and saying some pretty derogatory things about her. If that was it, I'd be angry but not furious. Long story short, the conversation turns into some confusing conversation I didn't have much context for, but I got the gist. The friend that sent me the messages filled me in with what she knew. Basically, Chaz had an affair before we got engaged. It had allegedly been just one time with some guy she doesn't talk to anymore, but I don't know what to believe. Based on the messages, it seemed like that was the case. Apparently, all of her friends knew about this, and I was being played the whole time. I talked to Jazz, and she denied it, but I told her I didn't care, and she needed to leave. She was throwing a fit and refused to, so I left my own home again because of her. Told her I'd tell everyone what she did if she didn't pack up or and go by the time I returned. It worked. Two days later, I came back and she was gone. She tried contacting me to set things right, but I'm not interested. She can keep the ring for all I care at this point. I just don't want to see her yet. I felt so stupid and worthless and embarrassed. I didn't tell anyone the reason we broke it off. No idea what Jazz is telling people, and I don't care. The past month and a half has been a nightmare. 
but I've been slowly recovering my pride, and I'm trying to convince myself what she did was her own fault, not mine. It works out about half the time. And because I know some of you are going to ask because you think this is some rom-gom, I didn't go running to Kate. I've hardly spoken to her or anyone else for a while now. I've been enjoying quarantine and being left alone. Sorry to hear that, OP. It seems like she was totally projecting onto you and Kate because she cheated. Which happens quite a lot with cheaters. You did the right thing, and will be better off for it, even though it sucks right now. Whew, that was rough. But, it keeps getting better. Next up, am I the asshole for shouting at my ex in front of my daughters? I, 37 male, have three girls, 8, 10, and 12. Their mother walked out on us for another man when our youngest was round four. My ex still stays in contact, though, and pays child support. A few weeks ago, while doing laundry, I saw red spots on my oldest's underwear. I asked her if she knew about it, and she cried and told me she tried to call her mom, but my ex didn't call back. She's been stuffing toilet paper in her underwear, hoping that would work. I explained to her that periods are nothing to be ashamed of, and found some great resources online for us to review together. I took her to the store to pick out brands of feminine products she wanted to use. She picked Playtex Sport because she's a gymnast. After we were done, I decided I should do the same thing with my other two. My 12-year-old volunteered to be part of repairing them, and we made a whole night of it. It was wonderful, and I learned a lot. I even learned what a menstrual cup is and how they benefit the environment. The other day, my ex called back. I'll usually arrange a video chat and leave the room so they can have some alone time, and when they're done chatting, I'll come back in to talk boring co-parenting stuff like school, bills, etc. This last time, my ex was furious with me for talking about periods with the girls. She shouted at me that I was sick and perverted. Why didn't I call her myself if I knew it was so urgent? I could have called one of their grandmas, aunts, but my mom has dementia. All her mom and sisters call me a loser because I teach kindergarten, so I'm not fond of them. My ex told me I was being immature and should have just toughed it out for the girls. This really pissed me off, so I shouted back that maybe if she wasn't such a deadbeat and answered her goddamn phone once in a while, she could have handled this. I brought up everything she does that hurts them. She hasn't been to a single soccer game, piano recital, or gymnastics meet in two years. Every other weekend when they come home from her house, they go straight to the rooms, only to emerge hours later asking me why she loves her new husband more than them. And what did they do to make her leave? My ex responded by saying I should tell them it's not their fault, I couldn't satisfy her, and I screamed, F you, and she just smirked and pointed behind me saying, look what you did. When I turned around, my 8-year-old and 10-year-old were standing in the doorway crying. It broke my heart. I never shout, so I know I scared them. My 12-year-old stormed in and sort of screaming at her mom, and while I appreciate her sticking up for me, this is not a battle I want her fighting. My ex hung up before I could fully de-escalate the situation, and let's just say the girls have been given free reign of the ice cream and limitless hours of video games because I feel so bad. I even watched all the Twilight movies with them, so don't say I don't love them. But in this instance, am I the asshole for shouting? Update. Last weekend, the girls read their moms. After she dropped them off Sunday night, my tall girl asked to talk to me in private. We went into her room, and she showed me two recordings she'd taken on her phone. One of my ex trying to convince them I was abusing them, and one of her and her husband arguing about how much she was paying in child support. And I'll be honest here, my cousin is a family court lawyer and basically raped her over the coals. It wasn't pretty, but I was still extremely hurt over the affair. I even got alimony. Anyway, my 12-year-old told me she didn't want to go to her mom's anymore, but she said she felt she had to because she's the oldest sibling and it's her job to protect the younger ones. I've always instilled this value in her. I'm an oldest child myself, but seeing this just made me even more upset because now it's just another battle she's fighting that she shouldn't be. She's also just started to figure out that her mom cheated, and over the past couple weeks, she started firing tons of questions at me about the timeline of their relationship I couldn't really answer. And after showing me the recordings, she literally demanded I answer her, yes or no, did her mom cheat on me? It wasn't easy, but I told her the truth, with the promise she wouldn't tell her sisters, as much as it sucks that's my job, not hers. The way she cried on my shoulder was the most heartbreaking thing I've ever experienced, but she was catching on, and I figured if she's going to find out, regardless, it should be in a setting where she's comfortable. After she was done crying, I told her to email me the recordings she took, and called my cousin. We've just started the paperwork, but my cousin is certain we can get my ex nailed for parental alienation, and since she got a promotion a few months ago, I should be able to renegotiate the child support payments as well. Most importantly, 
the recordings should be enough to give me grounds for supervised visits only, which is what I want. I still want the girls to have a relationship with their mom, especially since the younger two still want to see her. I'm just going to have to make sure I'm present at all times when they're with her. Co-parenting is oodles of fun, kids. Anyway, I also want to give a huge thank you to all the supportive comments and messages. I only saw most of the DMs recently because I use the Reddit is fun app in my phone and for some reason it doesn't show chat room messages. I'm not the best with technology, seeing as my most valuable job skill is hurting five-year-olds, but I wouldn't trade it for any other career. You sound like an amazing dad and your girls are lucky to have you. You are doing an amazing job and even knowing she's trying to turn your girls against you, you're still trying to facilitate a relationship between them and her for their sakes. That's awesome. Good luck, OP.